Welcome to our first video on the threat to the surveying playlist. What can I say? I'm frustrated sometimes. I see very hardworking, competent surveyors out there doing the absolute best they can. But, you know, I and you and all the other professional surveyors often come up against this brick wall. And the brick wall is the theory that we're going to do this now just because we've always done it that way in the past. We've got an aging surveying population. We've got kind of a low fee structure, low salary structure in place. It's difficult to get licensed as a professional surveyor and a lot of other you know, headwinds towards the profession. So, since I just finished my Ohio State specific exam, I'd like to talk to you about a very interesting subject, and that is accessibility and portability. What I mean by that is accessibility is, you know, having the resources and the support to get the license or to get additional licenses. And portability is taking your existing license, like in Florida, and going to Georgia. So accessibility. I signed up last year to become, a, to become an Ohio surveyor. And it was like probably three months to collect all this stuff. Had to get my NCWS profile set up, which was already done, but the references are only good for 12 months. So I had to go out and get more references. Then, uh, I had some kind of deficiency like in the education timeline. There was this break in between one degree and the other. NCWS didn't like that, so I had to go in and fix that. So spend a, a week or two updating my NCWS profile, send it off to Ohio. Then I had to produce a passport photo. Then I had to produce identification. Then I had to produce, 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 and send it off. Waited a month, waited two months, waited three months, got back, they needed some more information, sent it to them. Okay, you're now approved to take the exam. When is the exam offered? Three months from now. So I'm sitting here waiting three months, just twiddling my thumbs. And then, uh, this is not the unusual case. The same thing happened for West Virginia. Three months to get my stuff together, six months of waiting. Then once I'm approved, it's three more months of waiting for the actual exam to take place. Do you as a professional surveyor have a year to wait to, to get a license? I know I don't. Well, why aren't surveying licenses, surveying exams more accessible? Well, it's because we've got these state bureaucracies all in their own little jurisdiction, all doing their own thing. So you go through and you get a four-year degree, take your FS. Then you get a two-year uh, experience or four years of experience, take your PS. Then you pass those two exams, you get a little more experience, you go take your state-specific. Well, now, you know, it's been six, eight, 10 years since you started your surveying career, what else could you have done in 10 years? You could have been become an attorney, a civil engineer, a welding specialist, I mean, all kinds of professions. And the, the income, the revenue, the career earning potential is probably better in all three of those professions. So how are we going to attract more surveyors without the income? We'll talk about that later. So the accessibility to become a surveyor, pretty low. But now you've got your license. You're now an Ohio surveyor, congratulations. Well, you move to a different state because your wife gets a better job. And now you've got to go get a license in West Virginia. Well, we're going to start basically the state process all over again. You've got to produce all your records. You've got to produce a photo, an ID, 
sample surveys probably. Wait, 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 get approved, wait another three or four or six months. Why did you have to go do that? Why did you have to take another state-specific exam to get another state license? Now this sounds like a dumb question to us surveyors because every state has their own license. But in Ohio, engineers don't have to take another exam. In California, engineers have to take an online ethics exam that's like two hours, nothing. Why do the engineers get to transfer their license portability when land surveyors don't? Everybody's going to say, oh, it's different surveying in Ohio than West Virginia. That's true somewhat. You know, West Virginia, uh, maybe some meets and bounds. Ohio is more of a public land state. But is surveying in Georgia that different than Alabama? Is surveying in California that different than Nevada? No, it's not. And Ohio is the exception. It's the birthplace of the PLSS. But still, are we, the land surveyor, really being served uh, by having these state-specific exams, which are administered at the state office, which take six months to a year to get approved, which cost us more money, more time, more resources. Is this really an efficient use of government money and private surveyors' time? I don't think so, but I'd like to know your comments about accessibility, getting the license, and portability, taking your license to a different state, and let's get a discussion going here, guys, and see you know, what kind of solutions we can come up with. Because just because it's done that way now does not mean it has to be done the same way in the future.